Well, hey, it's Monday night. How are you? Let's have, raise your hand if you saw at least 25% of the magic that just occurred on this stage. Yeah. Well, so, yeah. And then, so then the second part, make some noise to tell us how you felt about the magic that just happened on this stage. One of the things that I really love about The Bitter End is like on a Monday night, you can have uh, theater gods squelting to the heavens. Then you can have us causing chaos in your regularly scheduled week. And then after us is the Osnoy Trio, followed by that is Richie Kanata's Open Mic Jam. So uh, how about a round of applause for The Bitter End staying open and causing these things to happen for us. And before we even get rolling, I want to give a real round of applause to one of the superheroes here that we never think about until something goes wrong, because 95% of the time it goes right. That's Adrian in the booth, everybody. So we got two sections of show for you tonight. They, uh, we've had a really good run here at the Bitter End with Arboretum, and they've given us, uh, given us a full 75 minutes to entertain you this evening, which I'm really delighted about, which is why I'm standing up here by myself right now. Um, we're going to do a couple songs, introduce you to a couple of really wonderful people, and then we're going to show you side one and side two, basically the first 40 minutes of a brand new thing called White Rock Cliff, which we've been working really hard on. So um, please welcome to the stage my first guest to get us started, and he's going to tell you a little bit about what he's doing here, and then we're going to do something. Please welcome Steven Joukowsky to the stage, everybody. How are you doing, Steven? I'm all right. Is this your first time at the bitter end? This is my first time at the bitter end. Also, I love I love those people at the bar. If you feel like coming over to these tables, we'd love to have you. The sound I swear the sound is so much better over here. Um I yeah, I'm not sure why Ryan has me here. But I'm glad he's invited me to be here. Um just give a small hoot. Uh if you have ever heard, I'm expecting silence, if you've ever heard of Stan Rogers. That's what I thought. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Aside from the one person, uh, my girlfriend Grace over there, Stan Rogers. Hi. <laughs> Stan Rogers is a Canadian folk singer. Um, Ryan and I share a love of Irish music. Our love of Irish music led us to Stan Rogers, whose music often has kind of a, a Celtic, uh, maritime feel. This particular song doesn't. Um, but <laughs> so here's all the things that we love about him, and now there's right. none of that. <laughs> I didn't want to set you up for disappointment. Um, unfortunately, uh, Stan Rogers uh, died in the early 80s, very young, in a, um, a fire on a plane, an electrical fire in, uh, at the age of 33. But I, uh, we both kind of like to share his music with people, and we're hoping to do more together, and we thought this one would be a, a nice song to do. So. It's called Down, it's the, called Down the Road. Adrian, can I get a little more of the acoustic right here? Thank God for sound people. This song also, you're, I imagine there's a lot of musically inclined people in here. There's like a sing-along portion. There's no words. You just sing undo when I sing undo. And I would think it'd be really cool if you did. <laughs> you'll, you'll get it, it's very simple. <laughs>
In the dark they sit and they holler for more white smoke in a whisk from here to the door. Their admission they paid for the stories they're told of a clear new day only down the road. So heavy rain at my back, lazy meadows ahead. In my book I keep track of the promises said For my songs in a town that tomorrow will hold I'm feeling fine for now Going down the road Do 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 music and talking about life and all those good things and he was like you know i love stan rogers i was like i still love stan rogers too but you know like baritone is really hard to capture and he's like can i sing for you and i was like sure and then that came out and uh man is a dead ringer for the man so a round more round of applause for steven chakowsky for well, those of you that have seen me do a show before know that this next gentleman is uh one of the most uh special and important people in my life which means that every opportunity i have um, to show him to the world and to share uh, the stage with him, I will take advantage of it. Please welcome Mr. Stephen Lyons to the stage. He's coming from behind me, isn't he? <laughs> Stephen and I are in a band called Bonfire Falls. If you're wondering, like, why, why is Ryan playing with Arboretum so much? Uh, one of the great things about Bonfire Falls is that Stephen and uh, our violinist Erica Walsh, who's incredible, and I are all actor musicians, which means when a job calls, we gone. Um, so Erica's in a major regional production of uh, Indecent in Pittsburgh right now, rocking the violin. And uh, so I'm playing with Arboretum, trying some stuff out, and uh, Mr. Lyons and I are going to do a Bonfire Falls song called Flash that we've never done as an acoustic duo, so get ready, here we go. <laughs> Choose at the side. 
of your sparkling eyes the first flash I saw happiness in one, two, three How I've fallen for you I've been brought known by this game before But I don't know who that man is anymore with the flash, 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 oh It's no fantasy that it's still when your race takes away Make it better, make it better during that song. I was looking at you and you were looking at me and I was like, I'm in Drop D. Oh, hi Drop D. Hi, welcome to Drop D. Drop D just dropped in. Okay, Drop D. <laughs> Sorry about that, but uh, Ryan McCurdy, thank God, on those gorgeous vocals. Thank you, Stephen. Hey, we're going to bring some more people up on stage and then tell you who they are, but can I get Katrine Van Real? Can I get Emily Erickson? seen him play with Arboretum before. That's because uh, his wife, Debbie, is our drummer. Uh, his wife, Debbie, is uh, currently featured in the uh, New York Critics, New York Times Critics pick, The Appointment at New York Theater Workshop, which is phenomenal, which means that she is somewhere on a scooter between 4th Street and here right now. She's here! She's here! No, she's here! Debbie's here, everybody! This is going to be the seamless transition out of this song. So we we thought we would do something, a song by Mr. Lyons that Bonfire Falls does. We're going to mix it up with a little Arboretum Joy in the middle. Uh, and we're going to have some fun and enjoy these beautiful vocals of Mr. Lyons. So let me just make sure that I've got this.
this man right here, Ryan McCurdy. And my brother, Stephen Lyons, right there. Please welcome to the drums, Tepix Young, everybody. All right, we're vast, vastly entering section two of our set tonight. We're about to perform 40 straight minutes of a brand new concept album for you. Yeah. I just decided I'd throw that out there now. Um, so this is something I've been percolating on for about uh, probably a better part of a decade now. Uh, I hiked about 400 miles of the Appalachian Trail in 2009, 2010, and it was... Uh, it's one of the most difficult things I've ever done in my life and uh, just about killed me on a couple of occasions. But uh, it was totally worth doing. So this is a show called uh, White Rock Cliff that we're working on. Uh, our goal is to tell a very uh, uh, fictional story inside of a non-fictional framework. For those that, aren't, that don't know about the Appalachian Trail, it's one of the few times that the United States government has actually managed to unify a number of states and federal funds to make something extraordinary happen. It's 2,000 miles of well-maintained hiking trails that start at Springer Mountain in Georgia and go all the way to the top of a 5,000-foot mountain called Mount Katahdin in Maine. And it is in incredible shape. You can hike the whole thing. Um, so round of applause for the people that made that happen. That's pretty good. Cool. So we decided to set a framework uh, to this and do a couple songs that existed already and a couple of brand new songs. So I want to introduce who everybody is so you know what's going to go on. This is Katrine Van Reel on the bass right here. <laughs> She's going to be playing and singing the part of the female protagonist. Uh, when, when the female protagonist speaks, you will have the extraordinary Jillian Lewis, who's over on the side right now, who's going to be coming up and doing some stuff. Uh, I'll be uh, playing and singing male protagonist. When I am speaking, it will be this turn. He's a last minute replacement, and ironically, he is the person who I am most replaced with in shows and who I have most replaced in shows. So it's the perfect casting. Mick Blyer over there will be reading my role tonight. And then hikers, uh, people of the trail, becoming multiple characters throughout the night. That's Paris Ellsworth on the violin. The extraordinary Debbie Chong back behind us on the drums. And you've heard her before, you'll hear her again. We love her. This is Emily Erickson on the piano. <laughs> And the book, uh, the, the, the sections of monologue and, and scenes that you're going to hear in just a minute are by uh, one of my longest term friends for whom one of the songs in this set is dedicated to. Her name is Ellie Pyle and she's watching on webcam from Los Angeles, California! She's our book writer. She, uh, I'm sure she would have loved to have been here, but she works for a company that released a film this week that no one's trying to spoil, so uh, I think they needed her in Los Angeles more than we needed her in New York. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's all I'm going to say. Please enjoy White Rock Cliff. Yeah. 
and it's not alright. I do not make a quiet time to play this song for you. probably safer right now, or at least that's what I was hoping. Where are you? Savannah, watching purple clouds roll in over the river. <laughs> Weather's gotten less like clockwork then. I used to be able to tell how long a tour had run by whether it was raining in the end. So much for the city, cursed to remain always the same. <laughs> Do you remember the violinist from, from the Echo Square? Uh, maybe? I remember the square. Uh, stand on the X and hear an echo. <laughs> but in my mind, the violinist uh, was somewhere else, by the, maybe by the courthouse? He's gone now. People are just disappearing. Well, maybe he went somewhere. Maybe. But no one seems to have noticed he's gone. You did. Yeah, but who am I? Well, maybe it's better that way, to just disappear one day, rather than to suffer slowly leaving all your stuff behind. What, what kind of stuff? It's camping gear, mostly. He was planning to hike the Appalachian Trail. He tried before, many years ago. He didn't tell anyone, just dropped out of school and disappeared. And then I got a call to come and get him in Pennsylvania. He'd taken a bad fall on some sheer rocks, tried to keep going, and then hobbled out. Uh, but when he, he got to the hospital... That's when they found the cancer. You remember? Of course. It's just that we weren't together then. That doesn't mean I wasn't paying attention. Hmm. I don't think I ever told you about the dream, though. The night before he fell, he had a dream that uh, the stuffed monkey that he loved as a kid was telling him to come home. <coughs> of course he didn't listen. He ended up there anyway. <laughs> I guess someone was looking out for him. Well, he didn't always think so. There were plenty of times I think he wished he'd just die out there. He always planned to go black. <laughs> when he got better, he kept buying me supplies. God knows with what money. But he needed them. 
He needed to believe that he'd finish it. He said we'd go together. That if I could just see it, I would understand. You still can. <laughs> sure. This is definitely the time to go on a 2,000 mile hike. You don't have to go the whole way. Just half. I'll set up from Spur Mountain and, and come and meet you. Well, I, I can't just, just leave my job, my life. None of that's going to matter anymore. The world is falling apart. The cities aren't safe. The towns, maybe the wild places are where everyone should be. Um, well, if everyone was there, then it wouldn't be any safer than the cities. People are what's dangerous. But, but they're not there, at least not yet. If we leave now... No, this is crazy. Yes, it is. But you trust me, right? Should I? You always have, for some reason. Well, even, even though if we... <laughs> How would we find each other? It's one path. Unless you're in the towns, there's no way to miss each other. And that the halfway point is uh, Pine Grove Furnace. We'll meet there. And then what? I don't know. <laughs> but I think that by the time we get there, I will. Well, you've had 10 years. And I thought I would have 40 more. But all I know is that I don't want the world to end without seeing you again. The, the world isn't ending. You don't know that. When the grid goes down, we'll all have no way to see or hear from each other ever again. So people have lived for centuries before the internet or phones. But we don't know how to how to anymore. I, I think it'll be a long time before we do again. And I and you know this is crazy. <laughs> Maybe at times like this, doing something crazy it's is the only way to stay sane. I'll call you when I get to Spurrier. You can decide then if you want to. Uh, Pine Grove Furnace? Pennsylvania. I'll see you there. <laughs>
circuits are busy now. Will you please try your call again? Invisible threads of time drifting through the path like a stream, tying people to one another, pulling them forward or back. I've spent a lot of my life too busy to see such things. And maybe that was by design. It can be overwhelming. So much beauty and nowhere to hide. There are no choices to take up space on a single path. Nothing to agonize over or fill your mind. If you know who you are, and you know where you're going, the way can seem very straight, no matter how it branches or curves. And I've always had maps made of stars and cards and dreams illuminated by ambition, intuition, and practicality. My path was almost always clear because I did just what came next. I just walked forward and turned at the right times. But is he the one person who has ever been able to convince me to step off the path, or the one I've always been walking toward? I guess I've chosen my direction either way. There's never any going back, not really. Even if you turn around, you'll never achieve the same awe as when you walked that way for the first time, saw it through fresh eyes. But sometimes, all those layers of memory make the familiar sights richer, more intriguing for the ways they've changed. And you can still turn aside at any time, but where would you go? If you know your destination, any other path, wrong way. So you just keep walking forward. Did you ever see 
on Max Patch. Rain was threatening, but they climbed up the vault anyway and looked out. Look how beautiful it is, she said as she pulled the ring from his pocket. But the lightning struck before he placed it on her finger and it threw him apart and she was dead in an instant before she could promise the rest of her life to him. And they say that on nights like this, just before the rain, you can hear what she might have said whispering through the wildflowers. Thank you. 
There is no marriage in Laredo. I'm sorry, what? Where's that? What's that? There's no marriage in Laredo. What do you... Okay, so you, we just sang a song. Why, what, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, no, it's just... It's, it's, it's a place in my head. Where is Laredo, man? Right? Okay, cool. <laughs> Got Laredo, good for him. Yeah. It's a place in my head. Uh, I'm, I'm writing a series of stories. Oh, so like oh. Westeros? <laughs> well, if George R. R. Martin were Ray Bradbury. Who? Oh. <laughs> just makes the walking bearable. Have you tried just opening your eyes to the endless beauty of nature? <laughs> that sounds awful. <laughs> no, no, there is no marriage in Laredo. There is love, but its final form is physiological. When two people fall in love, they bond. They, they blend and fuse. A perfect one created from two that can balance one another's feelings by keeping only the best parts of each of them. They become their ideal self. Unassailable by a society so adept at, at seeing flaws, they are safe and unified, but in, in some ways, always alone. The warmth of a hand in yours is never quite the same if it's your own. One voice from one mouth that can neither speak or sing, but never at the same time. No one talks about the fact that one can still be of two minds, and the one thing they cannot share is their thoughts. Someone must always get the last word. But in Laredo, that is normal. The way things are and always have been. The oddities are those who never mate at all. The, the very few who are so completely themselves as to render love impossible. There is simply no room. Either they never tried, or if they did, when the best parts of each were weighed, only they themselves remained. Adoration became absorption. To most, they were a curiosity. But to some, a terror. What if you tried to blend and fuse only to find you had no self to offer? What can love possibly be? in the absence of need. Oh, it's a soul in your wishes. 
Grow furnace, dude. That's like 500 miles. Fuck. Pine Grove furnace, 1,069 miles to either Springer or Katahdin. Which way are you headed? I don't know.
have the first 40 minutes of White Rock Cliff, y'all. Paracels with a stage left in the violin and vocals. That's Katrina Van Real on the bass and the vocals. Right here. Katrina Van Real showed up with those vocals tonight. Yes, ma'am. It's Debbie Chow behind me on the drums and vocals. Hey, over here it's Emily Erickson on the piano and vocals. I'd like to thank Nate Hopkins for coming up and playing with us on the song. Uh, I'd like to thank Steve Zukowski for coming up and starting this all off right a little bit ago. A round of applause to Stephen Lyons and Bonfire Falls for coming up and just getting us started. And let's have a round of applause. I think they're still around. Where's Jillian and Mike? Where are Jillian and Mike? Jillian and Mike for greeting those scenes for us. Woo! So, your friend of mine, Ellie Pyle, watching on uh, live cast from Los Angeles. My name is Ryan McCurdy. I wrote the music and lyrics that you just heard, and I was playing guitar and vocals. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you, Adrian in the booth. Please take your servers. Uh, because they deserve it. And uh, stick around for the Osnoy Trio. Have a great night. Thank you guys very much.